Hello, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the books that I am really excited to read, to purchase in 2023. I have a list. I'm worried that I have forgotten some off of that list. Every time I create videos like this, I, I always, after editing and after posting it, realise that there was some that I missed out. So that's probably going to happen here if I've forgotten any. Um, I'm sorry. I've tried to make a list based on the books that I've pre-ordered and also some additional ones that I haven't had the opportunity yet to pre-order but they haven't been like, available for pre-order so <laughs> let's go through the list and if I've missed any I've missed any. I've got little baby hairs growing through here and I keep seeing them in the viewfinder like wh why? Why are they there? I don't know what to do with them. How to Tell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix is first up on this list. I'm so excited for this one. This one comes out on the 17th of January. So it's nearly out. I don't know what day this video is going live. Will it be out by then? No, it won't be out by then, but it's out in like a week from when this video goes live ish, give or take. But I'm really excited for this one. I love Grady Hendrix's writing. I'm really intrigued to see the direction that his writing takes, having read the Final Girl support group and that being a different style to something like the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires or Horror Store. So I'm looking forward to seeing the direction this one goes in. This one follows a woman whose parents have died and she has to try and sell their house whilst also dealing with her grief. She's trying to sell this house with her brother and together they are noticing that the house has some strange things happening and has other plans than being sold. I'm looking forward to seeing what type of haunted element we have here and if this one's gonna scare me because I'm still on that search for the fear, but this is book one. Then on January 19th we have The Mysterious Case of the Alberton Angels by Janice Hallett. Janice Hallett is one for one at the moment. One book that I really loved from her, The Appeal, and one book that I DNF'd, which was The Twyford Code. This one sounds interesting though. It's following somebody who is writing a true crime book two, two decades on from this crime happening. She is poking around and doing some investigating and ends up teaming up with a rival author who's also writing a similar story and she and him end up uncovering a couple of things that mean that actually maybe what they all thought was true this whole time hasn't actually been what happens. So I think this is going to be really good. I'm hoping that it's got the good mystery element, the book about books idea there as well is something that I really enjoy. I really love that Janice Hallett always writes in these different formats and I don't know what this one's going to be told via because we've had emails and we've had like a diary-esque format so I don't know what this one's going to be but I'm looking forward to finding out. Also on the 19th of January we have The Cloisters by Katie Hayes. This one looks fantastic, this looks so gothic and I am here for it. I love, love, love gothic horror. So this is following a woman who has started working at a museum and she is assigned to the gothic museum garden area and it wasn't necessarily where she wanted to get assigned to, she's hoping for a new start and then she comes across some very old long lost tarot cards and she realises that some weird stuff is happening around these cards and as a result of this she finds herself in the middle of a dangerous game. I can't wait for this one, I feel like this one's going to be really popular and really good. Gothic element, it's got the kind of slight dark academia element to it as well possibly, I don't know it's hard to tell at the moment without having read it but this one looks really good too. On February 2nd we have got Heartstopper Volume 5. Now I know that this is the date that is listed but I'm still questioning this date because I swear this is not available to pre-order yet, or I looked through Waterstones website and it didn't come up. So I, I don't know if this date is wrong, I'm sorry, but obviously this is the fifth and final instalment in the Heartstopper graphic novel series which follows Nick and Charlie. I'm really sad to say goodbye to this series, it's been so lovely, so wholesome and it's just got so many fantastic and important messages in it. It's been such a good series, so this is the, the fifth instalment and apparently it comes out in early February, but I haven't been able to pre-order it yet, so... I'm I'm pretty sure that's the date. That that's what the internet tells me, but the internet could could be a bed of lies. I don't know, but I'm excited. Also on February 2nd we have Amelia Hart's Wayward. This one follows three different women across time. We have a woman in 2019 who is escaping an abusive relationship. We have a woman in the 1940s who would rather be outside than be the kind of young lady that she's expected to be presented as. And then we have a woman in the 1600s who is on trial for witchcraft. I assume these stories are all going to knit together in some way and have the kind of theme of witchcraft going through them all. I don't know if they're all related in some way, like as in the women are all related to each other, but I'm looking forward to seeing how this all links together and again the witchcraft element and I'm hoping that this has a gothic undertone to it possibly, I don't know, but it looks really good. 
On February 28th we've got A Day of Foil Night by Samantha Shannon. Obviously this is a massive massive release. I have read this, I was very kindly sent the arc by the publishers and it is fantastic. It is a great big epic political fantasy about a load of badass women who are coming together to stop this really really bad thing that's kind of been building and building. It's fantastic. It is a prequel to Pride of the Orange Tree. You could read it separately. I think you could read them both separately. I think it's up to you which order you choose to read it in. You will get a spoiler in Priory for Day of Fallen Night, but you won't know it's a spoiler when reading Priory, so it depends. But it's very good. It's very chonky, but it's fantastic. March 23rd, we finally get The Sinister Booksellers of Bath by Garth Nix. I'm so looking forward to this one. The Left-Handed Booksellers of London was such a good book, and now we are going to Bath. This book, I can't really tell you too much about the details of it because it will spoil the first book, but there are different types of booksellers. There are studious booksellers and there are kind of like spy action adventure booksellers. There's the left-handed and the right-handed booksellers. And the this book takes place in Bath and it follows some characters from the first book who are investigating a string of disappearances and murders that all link towards this one serial killer slash magical person. It looks great. It's set in Bath. I'm so excited. I love Bath. Bath is one of my favourite cities. I go there all the time so I feel like I'm probably gonna have to go there and read this book but oh my gosh I cannot wait. It's just, this one is very high up for me because I feel like we've been waiting a while. I think it's about three years maybe? I don't know. Th two and a half? It's been a while. I'm very ready for the second book in this series. On April 25th we have TJ Clune's latest book which is In the Lives of Puppets. This looks like it's gonna break me. We follow a robot family who are isolated and hidden until one of them accidentally gives away their location and another one of the robot family is kidnapped. So the other two in the family have to leave their safety net and go and find the robot that is missing. You just know it's going to be an epic adventure. It's TJ Klune. It's probably going to make me cry. I don't think I'm ready for it. It looks like I'm going to get emotionally attached to some robots with this one. So yeah, can't wait. It's gonna be great. April 27th is Skandar and the Lost Rider by A.F. Steedman. I'm currently reading the first book in this series at the moment so I haven't looked at the plot for this one because I don't want to inadvertently spoil myself but this follows a world in which unicorns are real and you can be a unicorn rider if you were chosen by this unicorn egg to be your unicorn and it follows our main character who is has gone on the journey to becoming a unicorn rider and obviously there's these big dangerous elements to it, there is the big baddie. I'm really looking forward to reading book two already and I haven't finished the first one yet because the first one is just so good. It's such a brilliant storytelling method and it just feels so magical and so fantastic and I hope that each book we see them age up and we see the developments of their time at this school, is it good, can I call it a school? Unicorn trainings at that place? It, it's good, it's a good series and I'm looking forward to the second one. April 27th is Alice Slater's Death of a Bookseller. I love books about books and this one looks quite dark. So we follow a main character who has worked at this bookshop for a while and is very much keeps herself to herself. She likes her murder podcasts, she likes her true crime serial killer books and then somebody new starts at the bookshop and they are like the life of the bookshop, everybody loves them and they form a real morbid obsession with this person and really want to know absolutely everything about them. This sounds very intriguing. I feel like we're gonna have an immensely morally grey, probably fairly unreliable narrator, which I am here for. So yeah, book about books, yes. Dark tones, yes. Possibly thriller elements as well, I don't know, but it looks really, really great. I think this one, again, is up there with one of my top ones that I'm most looking forward to for this year. On May 25th, we have another R.F. Quang book. We have Yellowface, which I have an arc of on NetGalley really want to read it before release day. I will definitely read it soon. This looks so interesting. Obviously R.F. Quang is normally known for fantasy writing. This one is a literary thriller I think it's classed as. So this follows two opposing authors who went to university at the same time. One of them became very successful and one of them did not. The one that became very successful then dies in a freak accident and the one that didn't become very successful watches this accident happen and in the moment decides to steal this now dead author's unpublished manuscript about Chinese labourers, send it to her agent and get it published. It becomes very successful and she is then living in the shadow of this dead author essentially or like not able to get away from what she's done and it's a question of morality and how far she'll push herself, it's a question of white privilege, of greed, of ambition. It looks absolutely fascinating, I know that a lot of people have been enjoying it. 
I don't really know why I haven't read this one yet, but I will be reading it very, very soon. So yeah, this one comes out, when was it? In May 25th. I have a list of everything behind the camera. So May 25th for that one. It's it's gonna be great. Into July now, July 25th, we have Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong, another one that I have an arc for, so I will be reading this one relatively soon. This is an Antony and Cleopatra retelling. It is the start of a new series from Chloe Gong, who does a banging job of writing retellings. This one follows an avenging princess and a debt-ridden fighter who join forces to take part in a series of deadly contests. I love the kind of contest storyline. The Empire of All Seasons, I think the book was called, did that in a really, really fun way. And it was really interesting to read about. And like, you just kept wanting to turn the page because you wanted to know what the next contest would be. So I feel like this one's gonna have that, that element to it as well. But being an Antony and Cleopatra retelling adds to it on top of that, because as I said, Chloe Gong, fantastic at retellings. So this one, another one I'm really looking forward to. And finally, A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber comes out September 12th. This is the third and final installment in the Once Upon a Broken Heart series. This, I can't really tell you what this one's about either because I don't want to spoil the first, but this is about two people competing for one person's heart. Very magical, very elaborate and beautiful. Everything you want from another series that is a, is a spin-off from the Caraval series. It's just fantastically beautiful and so expansive. And this whole world that Stephanie Garber has created is so beautiful and creative and immersive and I just can't get enough of it. So that is the final book on the list of books that I am most anticipating for 2023. For anyone who watches my videos normally where I have to describe books, I end up just reading the blurb. And I didn't want to do that this time. And I actually pre-wrote notes using Goodreads and Waterstones as to what the books were about and just wrote like a couple of bullet points that I wanted to tell you about. And my God, why have I not done this before? So yeah, this is, this is a new era. This is the note making era. <laughs> so much easier. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. You can comment down below what you are most looking forward to. Also, I think I've actually got affiliate links down below. Do I have a Waterstones affiliate link? I'm gonna add one if I don't. If you are looking to pre-order any of these books, I have a Waterstones affiliate link. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but when you do use it, it does give me a little bit of a support from like the percentage of commission from the order that you place, I think. So no extra cost to you, but very, very, very helpful to me. I will leave that link down below and it's always there anyway. There's loads of affiliate stuff linked down below. I never talk about it. Anyway. <laughs> You can subscribe to see more of my face on your feed. You can also, as well as that stuff, find a link down below my Patreon and my online shop. Thank you so much for watching. Keep smiling and stay positive.